All right, what's good? Welcome to, you know, kind of near the end of, uh, of our, our class here, but we are in one of the final uh, modules for this class from Muse 360, uh, where I really want to focus on talking about um, DJ battles, uh, DJing, uh, scratching, um, and specifically also look at the uh, Filipino-American or Pinoy uh, influence on uh, not only the, the culture um, and technique and skills, um, your major influence uh, there, but also the economic and industrial influence of Filipino Americans on, uh, on scratch culture and the industry that, um, you know, caters to scratch culture. So, uh, you know, I'd ask you to, you know, read a few chapters, uh, book chapters, um, you know, one particularly focusing on the battle itself and gender in the battles in that Mark Katz chapter, as well as a chapter in Legions of Boom, uh, which is a, a great book, uh, like an oral history or an ethnography on um, the uh, mobile DJ scene in, um, in the Bay Area, uh, the Filipino-American uh, mobile disco scene primarily from the 70s to the 80s, uh, and also as it tra transitions into, um, uh, transitions into uh, you know, the turntablist or the scratch DJ scene there. Uh, many of the DJs like uh, Q-Bird and Mixmaster Mike, Apollo, Shortcut, uh, a lot of those people, you know, those very influential, uh, you know, D-Styles, uh, you know, cut their teeth out of the mobile disco scene or the mobile scene, as it was called, uh, in um, in the Bay Area, Daly City, pri primarily, um, you know, San Francisco, etc. Uh, but uh, it's a great it's a great book, a great a great story on that. So you know, um, I asked you to read a chapter uh, that kind of looks at that movement from uh, the mobile scene to you know scratching and turntablism and more of like a hip hop aesthetic. Um, so just some information on Filipino Americans, uh, you know, and, um, you know, demographic information. Now, this is always slightly uh, behind the curve or, or dated just because census data seems to be pretty dated. But, um, you know, you know, according to, you know, uh, census data, there's 3.4 million uh, fil uh, Filipino descent. Um, you know, uh, Filipino Americans in the United States, um, and it's the second largest population of, um, you know, uh, you know, Asian ethnicity here. Um, and so there's a pretty large diaspora specifically out here on the West Coast. Um, and um, so anyways, uh, specifically California, which has, you know, I don't know, uh, almost half, 50% of the Filipino American population lies in California and specifically in Los Angeles uh, and in the Bay Area. Okay. Um, and this is, again, just some demographic information that specifically comes from uh, Oliver Wang's book, Legions of Boom, <coughs> um, because it kind of, it sets uh, a lot of the stage specifically for the mobile scene and um, why the mobile scene was so important to turntables and, and ultimately to battling because so many of these, um, you know, these DJs, the invisible scratch pickles, whose battle, team battle, we've, we've watched now hopefully twice, you know, um, th they went on to have an amazing impact on, you know, the turntablist, the scratch DJ, the beat juggling, um, you know, culture and technique and industry of, of the 90s, sort of the heyday of, of turntablism or the early, hey, one of the early heydays of turntablism. Um, and so understanding some of the, the demographics, um, you know, of, of um, the Filipino diaspora here in the United States, uh, you know, gives you some social context um, to why um, many of these DJs came out of the Bay Area, why many of these DJs like DJ Babu, um, you know, came out of, out of, you know, Los Angeles, you know, um, et cetera. And I think one of the, you know, the important things to understand is that, you know, uh, in the United States, many Filipino Americans, almost four, you know, 40% or more have college degrees. So it's a very, um, you know, very 
sort of middle class, um, middle class culture. Um, and, you know, with that and, and with the diaspora, you know, uh, uh, immigrating here, you know, largely, um, you know, in the World War II uh, era in many ways, um, uh, you know, there is just a, a, a sort of sense of community value, um, you know, often fo focused on the family of hard, of hard work and having a strong worth at work ethic and also like mo moving up, like upward mobility is a major sort of cultural um, tenant here, at least in the United States, uh, which, which kind of, um, you know, it may seem like it's not very important. So I'm looking at chickens. <laughs> always. Uh, it may not seem like very important information, but it actually helps to establish the pre-context for the mobile DJ scene in the, in the Bay Area, because the mobile DJ scene in the Bay Area is lar largely predicated on, you know, young, you know, largely teenage Filipino Americans uh, trying to, you know, hustle, essentially, you know, create a DJ culture that served a purpose where they could do like DJ weddings and DJ parties, <clears throat> DJ dances, you know, set up their own parties. And, and it was actually a lot, a lot grounded in, um, you know, economic stability and, you know, uh, earning money basically. And through that you actually had, because that became, you know, um, it wasn't about necessarily making 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 money entirely right there's a whole cultural existence to it but a lot of it was like you know economic activity like this is how you know being a um you know a mobile disc uh, D, mobile dj you know in the scene um ultimately <clears throat> you know would allow you to move up in society because it was like you you start a business and it was largely business based like these teenagers young people starting a business starting starting a hustle um you know, and, and starting their own business and making, making money and, and again, like moving, moving up. And, and, and it was just a very uh, important sort of, um, you know, pre-context for understanding this movement from the mobile scene into um, turntablism. Um, so, yeah, you can see this map here. This is, again, um, largely rather dated, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, data, <laughs> dated data. Uh, from 2009, which is why it's important for people to fill out the census, amongst other reasons. But I'm not going to get into that uh, right now. But you can kind of look at this, and you can and you can see um, where there's large, you know, large portions of uh, of Filipino Americans. So um, you know, largely California, the West Coast, Washington, Nevada, uh, Texas has a large population. Um, Florida, New York, you know, um, Oregon's kind of kind of thin, you know, but um, but uh, yeah, Illinois has a large population. I believe that would largely be in Chicago. Um, but I mean, just you know, just to give a sense of the diaspora here in the United States, um, and where Filipino Americans have sort of sort of settled here. But largely um, on the wet in the West Coast, you know, specifically California is where we'll we'll focus, you know, our our our, our energy and thoughts. But um, and we'll actually, you know, talk largely about the city, uh, a, a daily city, um, where so many amazing, um, you know, Filipino uh, DJs or Pinoy DJs got their start, and where a lot of this mobile, um, mobile, you know, DJ culture uh, took off in that area during during the '80s, which is largely, a, you know, middle class uh, suburbia. I mean, literally, you see some images of Daly City. It's just, it's, it's pretty much like a suburban, um, <clears throat> you know, area um, as much as, you know, suburban sprawl, if, if you will, um, you know, relatively close to, to San Francisco. And, you know, you can't, you can't really pin, pinpoint that this is where, um, you know, all mobile, you know, uh, Pinoy, you know, DJ crews came from, but so many of the prominent DJs that kind of stemmed from that area and moved into battling and turntablism, um, you know, made made their way out of Daly City or kind of got their stronghold in that in that area. So, um, 